problem. Seven is a big one. Apparently, torsion group of the rational points on an elliptic curve. That means we have to mimic the proof of proposition 17. On the other hand, I think that we only need to, to check the last part, that that's the only thing that will be new. The first th thing I thought that to get these conditions right, I need to construct examples of the points using, of course, what I already did on, ex on problem six, finding conditions for point of sh points of order two and three and four. We can't have points of order four because that requires square root three to be rational, which it isn't. And on the other hand, uh, it's likely that uh, the powers of two and three will be handled by the proof. We'll have to look into that. Uh, at least points of order nine that that should be handled by the uh, reduction modulo p as in the proof of proposition 17 but i would start i would like to start to find examples where we have points of order two and three either or and both which will give a point of order six to verify uh, these conditions and also to uh, to make sure that what I wrote on this page is actually correct. Yeah. And actually uh, we will of course be looking at uh, that was a big guy Is that really correct? Maybe it's just an analogously. So uh, we'll be looking at primes equal to two modulo three, where we know the uh, the number of the order of the group being p plus one for large enough primes. So, so I believe that will be easy to do, but we'll if I understand the proof of proposition 17 correctly, of course. And then the uh, work of finding these points and verifying these equations, I won't do it online because that requires a lot of Mabel and also getting the testing of order three to work and being able to find the, the order of those points that have order six. So all that I will do and then present, and then we'll be working on the proof again. So this finishes the first part, what I'll do today. I actually didn't have long time today, but then I didn't know that it would require so much work to, to solve problem seven. It just occurred to me, let's try to do the last part, maybe making, um, the proof of proposition 17. I didn't write up how we define G. So that's the uh, torsion group, the elliptic curve, uh, over Q, and the torsion group. I think they used another they called it EN, so maybe we should call this guy EA. And then put a little more. I don't think you'll be able to read or just read it, write it again. Over Q and then the torsion group. Now, the problem we. Um, I 
don't, uh, I, I want to use two for primes. So we can either have order four, we know that's impossible, or uh, an element of order nine, or a prime larger than or equal to five. And that means that if there is an element of order 4 in G, I should write orders. So if G contains an element of order 4, then for all primes large enough, 4 should divide P plus 1. And the same with 9. And then the prime. For all p sufficiently large. Sufficiently is actually a, a bad term. Um, but sufficiently large. So there is a boundary that 4 divides p plus 1. That means that p is congruent to minus 1 modulo 4. Here p is equivalent to minus 1 modulo 9 and here p is equivalent to minus 1 modulo p mark and p needs to be equal to minus 1 modulo 3 and that means that applying the uh, Chinese remainder theorem is very easy because in the first case, I'll just take myself away, I'm not that interesting. Here we have if P equals as equivalent modulo 12, then uh, it's equal to minus 1 modulo 4 and minus 1 modulo 3. And there is an infinity of primes, this guy. And uh, oh, here it's sufficient that it's minus 1 modulo 9. And in the next one, it's sufficient that it's equivalent to minus 1 modulo 3 p marks and they are of course co-prime so there exists an infinity of an infinite number of these primes so there will so so if there is an element say of order p prime in the torsion group then for prime sufficiently large it will be mapped injectively into the elliptic curve over the finite field of P elements. This is an A, etc. So mimicking the proof of or oh, yeah Mimicking the proof of Proposition 17 was the easy part, surprisingly easy. And we just need to, to do all the, uh, the hard work. The hard work is actually this, and I shall do that some other day. I need to make a little re um, correction. I didn't understand the full depth of the proof of Proposition 7 before starting here. 
uh, what made me think was what if we had two instead of here why wouldn't my proof go through and uh, it shouldn't go through because uh, there may be a point of order two and indeed all these primes have order two or uh, all these groups with these primes have order two have an element of order two because p plus one is even so I needed to think it through again once again now for all but finitely many primes we must have this And now if we choose P equivalent to 5 modulo 12, then P modulo 4 will be unity, and P modulo 3 will be 2. And 5 and 12 are co-prime, so there exists an infinite number of primes of this form. There we are. And the same here. Uh, and that confused me a bit because we have three, three squared here. So how is that possible not to have P equivalent to minus one if it's equivalent to minus one? But uh, that's because we can go to, to six or <laughs> we could even go to two to say it should be modulo two equal to two modulo nine five works as well but that's just complicated thinking and down here it must be anything but minus one it might be two so it's two modulo three p prime that works and that works because p prime is odd and co prime to three because p mark is larger than 5 or equal to. So that was a little remark, a little remark, and it showed that I hadn't studied the proof properly, not well enough to, to repeat it. But of course, it's the only way to, to learn a proof that's by doing it by hand a couple of times then in the end you will have thought about almost everything. That means that the next video, the continuation, should be about uh, these conditions and I'll do that some other day because I'm expecting my son. I have just had dinner so although it's still May the 4th, let's try to solve the rest of the problem. The uh, first part had me worried, but I believe I, I did it in the end. Now, um, of course, order one otherwise, that's our unit element at infinity. So that's always there. Let's take the uh, hint of the exercise and start with six. So, order six, that requires a point of order two and of order three. And when the cubic root of three of A is a rational number, or when A is a cube, then four A cannot be because it holds two to a power of a plus 2. So that means that these two can't occur at the same time. These are the ones that occur. So <clears throat> we have to have a negative and minus a, a square and a itself a cube, so then minus a is a cube as well.
and that is each prime occurs an even number and a multiple of three so that means that it must be a must be equal to minus c to the sixth <clears throat> and oh, they say b all right So we don't need to check that. Order two. Then we need to have A being a cube. And not being a negative square. Oh, that's what it says. <laughs> I thought I had to reformulate that to something more uh, more sensible, but that's exactly the condition here. So we need to have, find the condition for order three. We don't have, this is not necessary, or rather that is not the case. So A must not be minus c to the sixth, we'll just note that. Oh, that's not, just note that. And then we either have a point of, of this form or a point of this form. This is the easier one, that minus a is a square. Then we shall have a point of this type. And in the other case, we have 4a is a cube and 3a a square. So a must be positive. That excludes this anyway. So that was case one. Case two, 4a a cube and 3a a square. So we write a as 2 in some power times 3 in some power times a product of higher prime powers. Let's call that d. Now, 4a is a cube, so that gives, when we multiply that by 4, we get m plus 2, and n even. And of course, d must be uh, sixth power. Now, uh, when combining the two, and was this right? It's a cube when three divides, four a is a cube. So that means three divides n. Three a is a square. That means two divides m, and three and two divides n plus one. So that means m equals three 
which numbers do we have accessible don't like XYZ let's call it alpha minus or plus one and M is even that means that alpha is uh, is odd and here for N oh and then oh yeah yeah we can do that um, n equals two alpha minus one. Oh, that's another one. So let's call it beta. And n equals three gamma. Alpha odd, that means alpha is 2 delta plus 1. What on earth do we get when we combine all this? Um, so we need to combine this into one expression. needs to be not divided by 3 and then when we divide it by 2 this gives naught and this gives 1 oh yeah that's the same as plus 1 now let's put that into here 2 times n 3 times 2 delta plus 1 times 3 n 6 epsilon point plus 3 so this gives 6 epsilon plus 3 uh, and then times a cube So this gives another power, uh, sixth power, and then we get uh, two to the third times three to the third, three, three. That gives six to the third. That two hundred sixty. Oh, that's not what he got. He got four hundred thirty-two times a, a power, a sixth power of something. I'm obviously on the right track here. So we just have to find out where I went wrong. Now, 343, what does that give? Uh, we can divide, divide it by eight. That's 50 plus 4. So it's 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 3rd. So M... I did get N correctly, so it's M that's wrong. So four, when we add two and divide it by three, that makes sense and it's even. So it appears that M is
alpha is 2 delta plus 1. So I forgot the plus 1 here. Therefore we get 4 up here. You just stay away, my dear. Well, he won't. Two to the fourth, which equals 432 times a rational number to the sixth. So that was it. Necessary and sufficient condition. Uh, it's obviously a sufficient condition I've found. So I had prepared Maple uh, to make some examples, but it appears that I didn't need it. Well, when I started on problem seven, I thought, oh my God, we have to mimic the proof of proposition seven that will take days to get right. So I'm very pleased that I was able to solve it within one day, although I had to have uh, uh, three breaks all in all, because the two breaks were necessary and the third was, <clears throat> I, of course my son was visiting me, but on the other hand, I really needed a break at that point. <laughs>